The trauma scoring system is really complex. It could predict the outcome for the patient and it also helps in triaging the trauma patients. The most critical tasks have to be at the top of the list. The most important critical patient have to be at the top of the list. The most important critical condition have to be addressed first. There is a Glasgow Coma Scale, which is related to head injury, is eye-opening response. Verbal response and motor response. So you want to have a big number. A big number is good, which is opposite to the ISS score, where a big number is bad. In the Glasgow Coma Scale, you count what is working, what is functional. In the ISS, you count what is injured. So let's talk about the ISS score. The mortality rate correlates with the ISS score. The higher the ISS score, the more the mortality. If the ISS score more than 15, the mortality will be approximately 10% or more. If the ISS score is more than 18, then that means the patient is multiply injured patient, and that patient probably has to be transferred to a trauma center. So the ISS score is the sum of the three most significant injuries in three separate anatomical locations. And we have nine different anatomic regions, which are the head, the face, the neck, the thorax, the abdomen and pelvis, the spine, the upper extremity, the lower extremity, and external. Then every injury have a grade, like no injury will get zero, minor will get one, moderate will get two, severe like a fracture femur will get three, but it's not life-threatening, four, it is severe life-threatening, survival is probable, five is severe, patient is critical, survival is uncertain, six, this is the maximum score, possibly fatal. Here there is an example of calculation of the ISS score. So you sum the values from the three most significant injuries, the three most severely injured body parts. So the ISS is the sum of the square of A, B, and C. So a minor laceration will give you one AIS, which is the injury abbreviated score, fractured nose, fractured ribs, Fractured tibia will get two. Fractured femur will get three. A subdural hematoma, a flared chest, a bowel injury, a ruptured spleen. Pelvic fracture with bleeding will get four. Crushed larynx will give five. Crushed head and brain will give six. So if you have somebody with a fractured pelvis, flared chest, and fracture femur, and they have a tibial fracture, and nose fracture, and some laceration of the skin, then you go for the sum of the square of the most significant three injuries, which is the flared chest, four multiplied by four will be 16, the pelvic fracture, three multiplied by three will be nine, and the femur fracture, 3 multiplied by 3 would be 9. So, it is the sum of 16 plus 9 plus 9, which is 34. If the patient has bilateral femur fractures, and instead of one femur fracture, and you have also the same injuries of the pelvis and of the chest, the flail chest, 
then the ISIS score will remain the same, which is 34. Because the bilateral femur fracture does not get a credit, it will get the same credit as one femur fracture. When you calculate the injury severity score for the patient, and that's obviously not fair. The problem with the ISS score that injuries within the same anatomic location are counted only once. Like if you have a fracture femur, it will be 3. The 3 will be 9. But if it is bilateral fracture femur, it still will be 9. So it doesn't matter if it is one side or both sides, it's 9. But the bilateral fracture femur have a high mortality, about 6%, mostly from acute respiratory distress syndrome. So obviously they have to change it to the new injury severity score, the NESS. So they will have the three highest values regardless of the anatomic region. So that will give credit for the bilateral fracture femur and it is predictive of complication and mortality than the ISS score. How about the mangled extremity score? Mess. To amputate or not, the ISS score does not have any impact on that mangled extremity score. It's probably the soft tissue injury that is the most important. Also, the bone injury, the limb ischemia, the shock, the age of the patient. And plantar sensation is controversial. It is no longer an absolute indication for amputation. The outcome, especially return to work, is not really different between amputation and reconstruction of the extremity at two years follow-up. So if you have multiple fractures of the foot and no pulse, you got an open wound with a lot of soft tissue damage, then you will do amputation, especially if somebody older. Just remember, early wound coverage helps to prevent the complication of infection. Then another scoring system is the SERS, which is the systemic inflammatory response. It's usually a response to trauma, and you will get elevated cytokines and complements and hormones. The response can be very intense, and it is usually associated with conditions such as the DIC, ARDS, acute renal failure, shock and multi-system organ failure. So how do you diagnose that? The heart rate more than 90, the WBCs is less than 4 or more than 12, the respiratory rate more than 20, the temperature is less than 36 or more than 38. So it is the heart rate, it is the WBC count, it is the respiratory rate, it is the temperature. Each one of them will get one point if they meet the criteria that I just outlined it to you. And if you have a score of two or more, then you have the SERS, the systemic inflammatory response.